Hey, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and at the end of my last video, I told you I was on my way to the grocery store and possibly to check out an estate sale. It was described as a humdinger of a sale, and I've had less than stellar experiences with that estate sale company before, so I wasn't really inspired to go, but there was a picture in the listing of some vintage cruel, and it was only a mile or two from the grocery store I was going to wind up with so, at, so we went. Turned out there was a neighborhood sale, and sale number one had absolutely nothing. The second sale was fundraising for, I can't remember what, some local charity, and I found this. It is like the world's cutest little double boiler. We needed a double boiler for something a couple of months ago. I can't remember what or why, if we were going to cook with it or if Bill was doing something with beeswax, but for a quarter, we now have a super cute double boiler. I don't know if I will use it for cooking or crafting, and of course if it gets used for crafting it will stay used for crafting and not for cooking. although. Beeswax is food safe, I'm sure of it. Who knows? It's cute. It was a quarter. It makes me smile because it is just neat. I've never seen one quite like that before. I got this book of how to paint old barns. I do not paint. I would, I keep watching YouTube tutorials and thinking I would like to learn to paint. And it's one of those aspirational things to add to my sewing room. And honestly, if I can't learn to paint, could I do, use some of these sketches as inspiration to do some cruel? I think there are possibilities here. I am not entirely sure what they are. I'm not going to worry about it because it was 50 cents. It went to, like I said, I cannot remember which charity. Whoever it is, I'm not going to begrudge them the money. Wouldn't that be pretty in needlework or paint? And then I got myself a t an open tablet of pastel paper because I know there are pastels somewhere in the house. I know we don't have the right kind of paper. So somehow the double boiler and the book and the paper I think added up to $1.75. Nobody cares went and actually the estate sale we were aiming for was way down the road from the other two sales and this was by my standards a fairly new neighborhood maybe 80s so I wasn't wasn't getting real optimistic about the estate sale but I mean we were already there so we went in and the lady running the sale said make a bundle we'll agree on a price and I hate it when they do that because you ne I need a sense of what they are trying to get out of things because something that could be a quarter at one estate sale could be a couple of dollars at another estate sale and I don't think there's like a fair value for this stuff. So we went in and we wandered around and it became immediately obvious that nothing was priced because stuff seemed to very much be where it lay. It, it was one of those sad sort of estate sales. I found this. After tromping through the whole house and finding nothing, I found this. If you have watched my floss tube video about wanting to make an under the bed box or the thrift with me video where I first got the idea for recycling one of these old silverware boxes into an under the bed box, you will know why I squealed when I saw this. It did have a price on it. They wanted $5, which the one I saw at the thrift store was 15 and it was not nearly this nice. It had somebody else's initials on a little black brass plaque. This one's actually inlaid. Isn't that pretty? And in here is inlaid. It, it just... So I had talked to everyone in the family who might have an opinion and made up my mind that I was probably going to take the jewelry, not jewelry, silverware out of grandma's old box and use it. But 
I got this for three dollars and I am still I did while we were in the car pop out this piece there's some nails down where it was attached but that's what pliers are for and since I bought it at an estate sale for three bucks I'm just going to rip out the entire lining and see if I can reline it with something that I know won't hurt my stitching. When I figure out what I'm doing and I get to doing it, I will make sure to document for you in case you want to learn from my mistakes. But I think this will be just fun for storing cross stitching. In. It's way prettier than the one that Grandma got with green stamps in 1950. Plus, no guilt for tearing it apart because this is mine. That was... Oh. $3 got me this and a little trivet, and that's smaller than the other trivets I have. I don't think I have any this tiny. I think I've probably got lots of stuff I could stitch and frame in here or not. could use it as a trivet until I decide to stitch something that will fit in it. Then somehow we wound up circling back around the side of the house, which we had missed the first time. It was... Not a happy estate sale. Things were, I hate to diss someone's stuff, but it wasn't, it was an accumulation of household stuff. The needlework and the quilting stuff was all gone before I got there. So we were rocking around the side of the house. There were boxes of clothing and I saw this. I'm a little puzzled by this, which is, no, it's not inside out. Okay, I'm confused. So if you look at the print, it's a washboard and a sieve and a scuttle and all the old tools in black and white. And why exactly this is a woman's long sleeve shirt, I do not know. I am going to make it into a project bag for my cross stitch because I love this fabric. Oh, are those scissors? There are scissors totally going to make this into a project for, bag for cross stitch and I am so glad I went around the side of the house and found it. Oh, it's a spree, which makes me even more confused. Then I found this. It is an old ledger book. On the spine it says 67 and an eighth. I don't know what makes this a number 67 and an eighth account book. Whoever had... Something was in it that got ripped out, but Everything from page 11 on is here. I don't know why I love these. There's something about them that really appeals to me, and I don't know if I could track projects in it, or there will be something I don't know what, and I need to tell myself to just let go and use it because the world is full of these, and they're at estate sales, and sometimes they're really cheap like this one was. So I can use it without fearing that I'm going to waste it. Then I spotted this. It has a limerick. With his heart full of whirl and an arm full of girl, he hitched on the back of a cab. But alas, there were three, and so don't you see, it was awkward because she kept tab. I don't understand. But it's a postcard from 1908 and starts with, Dear brother, why don't you write to me, are you alive? And then goes on about how it's raining. So not great, wonderful content, but the idea of it, I like. I might do something with the back of it. Whoever Edna was, she had atrocious spelling. And then the super, I love antique baby pictures. I adore antique baby pictures. I don't know why. And then I picked this up like twice and put it back down because I was opening it the wrong way and it was cardboard and I assumed it was like a diploma or an announcement or something, but no, it is all the adorable baby pictures. My babies never were this cute in pictures, ever. No indication, either of these babies, no indication of who they might have been or where they might have been or when they might have been. I just love it. Nobody else wanted it, obviously. 
least nobody from the house it came from. So I got the shirt, the ledger, the baby pictures, and the postcard for another $2, which brings my grand total at that estate sale to $5. And oh, they had boxes of porcelain baby doll parts. Have you seen the picture on Pinterest where they put a light up in one of these and make it a lamp? I have been wanting to find a plastic one to make a lamp to annoy my sons with. This one's porcelain. It's, yes, all the things. And then I think that we're going to plant succulents in this one. Maybe. I probably could have got the entire box of random porcelain doll parts for very cheap and looking back maybe I should have I'm not in a position right now where I want to bring home a tremendous lot of stuff as I embark on cleaning out my sewing room but maybe that was a missed opportunity then we found one last estate sale or not estate sale the one where I got the box and the baby pictures was an estate sale the others were just run-of-the-mill yard sales I would not go so far as to say that I collect these old nylon spatulas, but I pick them up whenever I find them at estate sales because we really like them and I have a bad tendency of setting them on fire. So more is always better and we take them with the, us when we travel and apparently have lost quite a few of them. So I got my red spatula for 50 cents and they had children's books for a dime. Think junk journaling. I went through the box and I took all the old ones. If my kids had still been the right age, oh my gosh, that would have been a haul of newer good books. This one is New Centerville and I just, it is 1950s town life with all of the illustrations. And I just love it to pieces. I'm going to take these pictures and I'm going to do something I do not know what. I got Mary Poppins in the park, an old edition. It is falling apart, which is good because then I won't feel bad about repurposing it. And it has the library card. Sadly, it's all the dates are from the 80s, so that's too new for me to feel like it's vintage. But stories from Hawaii, which I've got ideas. They're not fully formed ideas, but the ideas don't need to be fully formed. Not when you're spending a dime. And for a quarter, I got myself a dictionary. And the lady running the sale was talking about how she loved this dictionary and used it until her eyesight failed too much for the small print. She wasn't that old. And how now she just asked Siri how to spell things. I... Don't, didn't have the heart to tell her that I bought it to cut up for junk journaling, but you know, there are enough dictionaries in this world for everyone who needs a dictionary, so I'm not going to feel bad about letting one of them go for artistic purposes. I wish I had filmed some video in the estate sale house. I totally could have because there was no one else in there with me. We are, to put things in perspective and add a little disclaimer here, our county has very few cases of COVID and at all of these sales, everyone was wearing masks. Everyone was keeping lots of distance from everyone else. So I don't feel that I was taking unreasonable risks. I wish I had done some filming though, just because that house was a little bit interesting, a little bit bleak not the kind of estate sales I am usually looking for, but I am so happy to have found my box and my baby pictures and my other stuff. Let me know, did I pick up anything you would have picked up? Are you going to estate sales lately? Found anything great yourself? Thank you so much for watching. I am Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and I will be back with you again soon with more videos.